Hey folks, here at OS Reviews, you're watching our video unboxing and first impressions look at the HomeTop S9 Plus. This is a 4G unlocked smartphone that sells for around $200, sometimes it's a little bit lower, and you can find it in the description below. So this is the flagship of HomeTop, which is a Chinese OEM uh, at the moment, and what's interesting is the display, which has an aspect ratio of 18 by 9, so it's a little bit slimmer than your typical phone, and it's uh, similar to what you'll find on current flagships like the LG you know, G6, and it's where the industry is heading towards, because as phone screens get larger and larger, having a slightly more stretched display means that it's better for watching videos, and it's just easier to hold using one hand. And the S9 Plus has a large display, it has a full 6 inch screen, however because of that 18 by 9 aspect ratio, uh, the resolution is only 720p at the moment. Furthermore, the device has an octa-core 1.5GHz MediaTek processor, complemented by 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of built-in storage. It also has a dual camera setup on the rear and a front-facing 5 megapixel sensor, in addition to a fingerprint scanner. Taking a quick look at the packaging here, very simple, uh, just has the company's logo, some stickers, and on the back you have, again, some of the specifications repeated once more. It is a dual SIM phone, so you can potentially put two SIM cards in there for traveling. It runs on Android. 7.0. Again, it does have full GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all the essentials. Battery is 4,050 milliamp hours. Combined with a slightly, uh, you know, lower screen resolution of 720p, it should last you for, you know, around two days, two and a half days before you need to recharge it again. Uh, the S9 Plus, again, similar to other kind of current. Uh, flagships from these Chinese uh, OEMs also comes with kind of a bezel-less uh, design. So it's in the same style as the Xiaomi Mi Mix, but this one does look a little bit more distinctive since the corners are rounded off. And I'll show you guys that in a second. But regardless, it has kind of three bezel-less sides, the top, the left, and the right, and there's a larger chin at the bottom, which you use for the fingerprint and the home buttons. All right, so in terms of accessories, we have what looks like a very interesting micro USB to a full-size USB OTG adapter. So this phone does support OTG, and with this accessory, you can potentially connect things like keyboards, mouse, thumb drives, which is actually a pretty nice uh, addition. So you can use this almost like a mini computer, since again, the phone's display, six inches, is quite wide and generous. Um, again, more similar to a tablet. So this is the uh, charging adapter, seems to be the UK prong in this case. There's also the micro USB cable for charging. So it does use micro USB and not USB type C, it appears. Underneath here, we have also a free carrying case. It's a hard case uh, this time around. It's not a uh, bendable rubber one like the one we saw with the Bluebow S1. This one is, you can see, it's uh, made out of a hard plastic material, but it's a nice extra that they give you. Uh, reasonable enough, and there's also what looks like a SIM ejector tool in addition to a user guide that's uh, fairly well documented. And finally, there is a screen protector, but since it is a matte surface, it should hopefully decrease the amount of glare and fingerprints of the phone. So here we have the device itself. Let's remove this uh, sticker from the unit. First impressions is that the phone is very heavy. It's uh, significantly heavier than on the blue bow. And if we peel off this uh, very shiny layer, What's interesting is that the pattern here kind of reminds me of something like the Samsung Galaxy S8 uh, in terms of how it's very reflective and has a nice texture behind the glass. So design-wise, it's interesting because it's like a mashup between the Galaxy S8 and the Xiaomi Mi Mix rather than just a straight-up copy like many of the other phones we've seen in the past of the Mi Mix. Um, there's also, of course, the stretch screen uh, aspect ratio, which is reminiscent of the LG G6. All right, so on the frame here, you have access to the volume control and also the power switch, and these are all very tactile and responsive. They're etched in metal and they have a good overall response to them when you're tapping and clicking on them. There are chamfered edges that slightly curves and tapers off at the edges, and then there are a few plastic antenna bands for the Wi-Fi, which is dual band and 4G LTE. The top here does still retain a full 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The SIM card compartment located on the side here, and uh, nothing else, it's very clean. The bottom just has the microphone and the speaker grill in addition to the micro USB port for charging. The phone itself uh, can be fully charged up in around two and a half hours uh, with a large 4,000 milliamp hour pack. And afterwards, again, it does give you quite a long endurance before you need to recharge it again. 
peeling back the film, again, there's already a pre-installed protector on the display. So the one that you saw in the, in the box that was, uh, again, the matte finish is just a secondary one in case this one gets scratched and you need to switch it out. So the phone is turning on. You can see that, again, it does employ this uh, interesting bezel-less uh, design. It's not truly bezel-less. You have still, obviously, this chin and small bezels on the sides. But uh, obviously it's a lot smaller than what you would find on other mid-end slash budget-oriented phones in the same price category that's unlocked. The top here still manages to squeeze in a very small kind of earpiece, a proximity light sensor, but the front-facing camera has been moved to the bottom corner, and there is also again the biometric fingerprint scanner. Very interesting initial boot up. You can see that uh, it seems to be fairly stock. It tells us to connect to Wi-Fi. In addition, sign up for some Google services, log in with an account, and create a name for the phone. So let's say OS reviews. And after adding a fingerprint, uh, we are done. What's interesting though, is the phone does still have a pretty heavy layer of customization in terms of the launcher and how everything looks, um, which is not what you would expect in terms of the sign-in process being very stock and vanilla, uh, compared to something like the Bluebow S1, which you guys saw in our unboxing, did not have that traditional kind of sign-in process. You didn't need to write a name, you didn't need to connect to Wi-Fi, sign in with your Google account. All of those things were bypassed on the initial boot. But on here, you still needed to process that and create your security essentials when you first turn on the phone. But uh, regardless, the interface here has been overhauled by the manufacturer, HomeTop. All right, so taking a quick look at the interface here, it still seems quite clean. There is a custom widget for the clock. Uh, the display here actually seems to be pretty good in terms of brightness. Viewing angles also seems to be fairly decent. It's an IPS panel. Although it's 720p, it actually does seem reasonably crisp looking. And part of that is probably because of the stretched aspect ratio. So technically the screen area is not quite as large as something that's closer to a square or slightly wider. Um, anyways, you can see the drag down notification shade uh, is uh, also been customized. It uh, has a slightly different color theme to it. I can turn on Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. I can also turn on the location services, flashlight, etc. Take a screenshot, and there's also a screen assistant, which is interesting. It brings up this little dot, and from here, it seems like we can unlock the screen as well as access uh, some of these controls like back, home, and multitasking without having to reach the bottom of the phone if it's uh, too difficult to reach one-handed as a six-inch uh, device. In terms of applications, all your Google services are on one tab and they are all kind of pre-installed. There's not too much bloatware going, in, going on. Most of these apps are basically just uh, regular Android apps, but they have a different icon in terms of how they look. Uh, so that's nice. There is a file manager built in and a FM radio though. And in addition, there is uh, one more, which is probably used for the launcher, I'm assuming. Um, everything else though is uh, fairly typical. You'll notice that there isn't a traditional kind of uh, app drawer, so you can't tap on the bottom here to bring up a list of all your applications. Instead, you have unlimited pages to populate with your uh, apps as you download more and more. Kind of reminiscent of iOS, but it's very common on these Chinese smartphones, just like on Xiaomi's MIUI, on Lenovo's uh, EMUI in, in, uh, based in Asia. So again, it's a pretty typical experience, and I think for first-time users, it should still be simple enough and straightforward enough. Um, so that's pretty much it as far as our unboxing and first impressions look of the uh, Palm Top S9 Plus is concerned. Obviously, we'll be coming out with a more complete uh, review soon, and I'll be doing a lot more testing as well with this unit in terms of its performance, how well it works. But for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at uh, OS Reviews, and I'll leave you with a quick, I guess, a comparison in size between this and the Bluebow S1. Both, of course, are huge fingerprint magnets, but you can see the slight difference between a 5.5-inch phone and a 6-inch phone although again the hum top does have a slightly newer and uh, longer aspect ratio so thanks for watching here at os reviews